Welcome to Illuminations, a program of study designed to guide you through the basic tools one needs to become a better painter. We intend to shed light on the theories, tools, and techniques that provide this foundation. Many of the subjects we'll explore seem to confuse even experienced painters when they're trying to do everything at once. Every stroke applied to a painting must exhibit the knowledge of composition, color, value, edge, linear, and aerial perspective. That's a tall order for a beginner, yet that's exactly what many try to do when they start painting. Actually, all these concepts are simple to understand when they're studied out of the context of trying to execute a painting. Join me for the entire Illumination series for a good basic introduction to the theory, tools, methods, and techniques every painter can use. You'll notice as another trait of young children that their irises seem to be very large. Well, they are large compared to the size of their head because when humans are born, their eyes are virtually adult size when they're born. That means that their eyeballs don't grow, but their head and the cranium that contains their, their head, their face, is small and it will grow. So an eye that's already adult size in a tiny little head is going to look relatively large. So to make your subject appear useful, you'll always want to take into account that the iris appears to be large compared to its counterpart in the adult. The light that illuminates that forehead cascades right across the hair. Even though the hair is dark, the light on the hair is very light. There goes the flesh up into the hair on the left. This is a good thing to remember in painting all head types, whether it's women, children, men or boys, if you can see where the hair pulls away from the forehead, it's always going to be a very soft edge, even if the hair is very, very dark and the skin is very fair. Because uh, the hair doesn't make a hard edge where it grows out of the, the forehead. Now when you get down below the ears, there's no hair growing out of the edge of the face unless it's a beard. So. Uh, you can have a hard edge down at the jawline between the hair and the flesh, but not on the forehead or the, uh, the temple area. Now we're making the, the symmetrical side of that upper lip match the lighted right side. You see where the cheek and the lip masses uh, have reversal of value. That is, on the right side, the cheek is dark and the upper lip is light. And on the left side, the cheek is light and the upper lip is dark. We're going to further set this up by reestablishing yet another time that dark value that comes down the left side of the face so that we can feel like that plane actually turns away from the light and then we'll repaint that uh, section between the shadow and the light that's the turning edge to give it a little bit more color. You'll always see more color in that edge and you'll see more color in the cheek area uh, toward the red tones. Even if it's totally in shadow, this area would have a bit more red tone in it. Now I'm moving into some of the finishing areas pulling that little chin forward by virtue of its light value and then connecting it back to the light by replacing it, replacing some of that light value. The light also goes right up into the corner of the mouth which will help to uh, set up her expression. 
once I put a light up there right under the corner of the mouth, notice how her expression seems to change. But first, I'm again losing some of those edges between the jawline and the value under the, on the neck. Any softening you can do where two values seem to be the same uh, will help in the illusion of creating the feeling of youth and smooth skin. Little vignettes like this are really fun to paint and uh, parents love to have little paintings like this that uh, are totally or are, are not totally finished. They feel like paintings, um, and if you're just beginning as a, a portrait painter or a painter of children or humans of, of any age, this is a good way to get started without the, uh, the added difficulty of what to figure out to put in the background. If you just use a, a toned surface of your canvas, and add just a tiny little bit of a neckline to your subject, you'd be amazed at um, how marketable some of these little uh, vignettes might be. And a good way to get you started into portrait painting if you've not considered it before. I hope you've enjoyed today's demonstration and that you'll join me for another of the Illumination series. Until then, enjoy painting.